Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. I just wanted to put out a little video on crew rates. You know, my goal as a construction uh, consulting firm is to help my clients understand the areas of construction that they have to deal with. And normally I, I have uh, clients that are, you know, self-performers. Most of my clients are not big firms, but uh, two or three man, woman operations. And so it's really important to understand what your crew rate is. And so, for instance, if you're a mason, you have the mason, you have the mason's helper, and then you have the hod person. The hod is a person that basically brings all of the masonry components to where the mason is. So a person that carries the bricks to the place, to where the mason is working. Okay, so those are three people. And the crew rate would be 20 minutes of each one. Okay, and so whatever the hourly rate is, you know, I would just base the hourly rate, if you know, maybe on the base rate if you have that information. Or more practically, maybe on a union rate, so you'll be fair. And that considers uh, fringe benefits, workers' compensation. And so remember, the crew rate is not an hour for each person. It's an hour, period. So if it's a three-man woman crew, it's 20 minutes of this, 20 minutes of that, and 20 minutes of that. You combine those rates together, and that's the crew rate. It will work, you know, with any crew that you use. So always, always have a technical basis for which you're uh, giving numbers. Have a technical reason why you charge a certain amount per hour. Have a technical reason. What's the technical reason? How long is the job going to take? Have a technical way to determine that. So, you know, the uncertainty in construction is, oh, I got to keep my crew working. I mean, my clients say that, oh, you know, we got to win so we can keep our crew working. Well, when you do an estimate, you are technically supposed to know how long that job's going to take. And so you know your crew's going to be busy for five days, 10 days, 30 days, 365 days. So what I try to do in my consulting firm, construction consulting, a lot of things, but mainly to teach and train people to not be taken advantage of. I mean, it's just rampant now that if you don't have your technical skills in line, you're going to be taken advantage of. You're not going to be paid what you should be paid. And don't take a job and work for a GC that undervalues what you should be paying. So the only way you will know is to have a technical basis for everything you put on your estimate. What's your real overhead? And your profit is, you know, what you would feel comfortable with at the end of the day after you've paid everybody. What do, what's my profit? It doesn't have to be something crazy. You know, for self-performers, my philosophy for that is you're already making the labor. So you're already making money from that. Big firms, if they're big firms, uh, uh, president sitting in the office he's not doing the work so yeah you got to have a good profit margin so the president can be paid the vice president can be paid all of those people but when you're the self-performer you come from the perspective of all oh, this money is mine and so when it comes to your profit what will I feel comfortable with after I'm done or you know I want to take a vacation so how much profit do I need to in three projects to help me with that $15,000 vacation? You know, you have the ability to do that when you're a self-performing. I have a gnat in here. Uh, so any questions about that? Again, my goal as a consulting firm for 15 years now, and I was a claims adjuster for 10 years before that, and I repair pagers for you kids out there that don't know what that is. 10 years before that. And so I've always succeeded in what I do. And my goal in this profession is to help you exceed as well. So 
Stacy Johnson. Make sure to subscribe. If you are listening, you should be a subscriber. And I'll talk to you very soon. A lot of stuff coming out. Um, rearranging a lot of the ways that I do stuff. So, you know, I have not been posting a lot, but I will. I'm starting. And this technical stuff, this is so important to me because when you know your, when you have your technical skills in line, you, you boost your game to a whole different level. Is in mentioning boosting the game, Saturdays we have, I'm beginning a one-on-one -on -one workshop for certifications, grants for small businesses, grants of free money, and, well, let me start again, business certifications. That boosts your game. If you are woman-owned, minority-owned, uh, veteran-owned, if you have your office in a certain disadvantaged portion of your city, you can get certifications that are no bids. You don't bid against anybody. You get the work, but that's because you, you know, disadvantaged firms, we kind of been behind the eight ball forever. Women own construction firms. If there are any, you know, we've been behind the, the eight ball. And so Saturdays we have the workshop for all the certifications. I'll explain all of them, how they can apply to you. And it's a game changer. I have clients in Texas. They're woman-owned, minority-owned firms. They never compete for anything. They stay busy. And um, you may not necessarily want to do that, but you want to know that you have a solid background of your revenue. And so my thing is... You should always have four sources, residential, you know, if you feel like dealing with it, commercial, of course, depending on where you are, there's a commercial something, a renovation, something commercially going up all the time, government, and now we actually have an infrastructure bill that's in place. There's so many opportunities for uh, government construction jobs. Your procurement office in your state. If you're a contractor, you should they should know who you are because they want you to do work for them. There's no bigger uh, business or employer in America than the United States of America. The, the United States of America buys everything from haircuts for prisoners. <laughs> to cleaning services, to you building a new school. So that's number two. Residential, commercial, that's number three. Government and service contracts. If you're an HVAC contractor, you should be some way, some shape, some form, somehow having or starting or looking into service contracts from everything from raggedy apartment complexes that the air conditioner breaks down every season, contact those people, provide a service, especially for older units that are out of warranty, they're always breaking down. Anything from just changing filters, maintenance, that kind of stuff. So, so many ways to make money in construction if you have your skills, your license, you've invested a lot of time in all of that and you wanna use it to your best advantage. So. Saturdays workshops where we show you what certifications you can get and if you're a minority you can get all of them and see there are certifications that apply to in the your local region your local city uh, Caltrans has certifications for contractors in this in each state you know, or Caltrans that's California transportation but whatever Mitch trans text trans what every state so you can get state certifications, uh, government certifications. You can get an SBA certification, the 8A, where it's a two-year program that kind of helps you build your business too. So there's so many different ways. Okay, so I wanted just to give you this information. It's all over the place. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me directly at education at sfjohnson.com consulting.com and I'll be back soon.